John, thanks for joining us. Um, one of our uh, regular updates, something that we're really enjoying, I think a lot of the feedback from supporters is the fact that we, when we say at the beginning of the season we're going to keep relationships building and keep information flowing, it doesn't always come to fruition, but we're definitely seeing this season that there's a willingness to do that. And it's only been about six weeks that we've missed each other trying to get this ready. Yeah. And it's you that's phoning me and saying, let's talk. Yeah. So let's do that. How are you enjoying the job, firstly? Yeah, loving it. Really enjoying it. Um, it's been a... Uh, a busy five, six months, so uh, but really enjoying the job, loads of different roles, bits I thought I would be doing, bits I wasn't too sure I'd be doing, but enjoying it, loving it, and they said it's just a, a continuous process to, to try and keep improving. Tell us a wee bit about the role. Um, I'm, I'm making a point of the fact that not everybody will have seen our previous interviews and chats and so forth, so give us, give us a wee run through your job description, because I Probably the one you're doing is maybe not the same as the one that was on your desk on day one. Yeah, uh, a lot of things have been added, you might say. So look, there's basically been in control of all the the football department and all the different aspects that that uh, that, that looks at. I said, and that's from the physio side, from the analysis side, from the sports science to recruitment um, to the manager, helping with the manager and calling. And then, as I said, at the same time, and trying to help with with Andy in terms of uh, his role at the club. Um, so no, I look a, a little bit of everything. I'm out in the training pitch as well with, with, with Ian and, and we call him, which which I really enjoy. Which I, I like that bit. That's the bit that I've done kind of most of my life and uh, enjoy that as well. So I would say a little bit of everything. Um, I say probably the, the the main bit um, coming up now is the, the recruitment side again that we're working on. So um, it can be difficult in January, but uh, it's one we'll hopefully come out with a bit stronger. Has your love of the game ever been higher? Uh, you know, I know you're kind of infectious positivity, but uh, you seem you seem a guy that's uh, found his place. Yeah, look, I'm always positive. Anybody that that, that knows me or have worked with me or, or, or players that have worked with, look, I think I'm pretty truthful, pretty honest, um, and I love my job and I love football. And you see, there's there's I'm probably seeing different sides of it than I have before. Um, but no, I'm I'm. Loving my job, really enjoying it, really enjoying trying to help build things onto a club and try and make the club better. Um, seeing signs of it is it can be a big thing, quite enjoyable when you see kind of visible signs of of things going well. Um, but it's we all know it's a, a long process, um, short term trying to do things you can see it, but again having that that little bit of vision for longer term as well to continue to try and improve this club. We're going to go through the kind of breadth of, of your role, but I wanted to start with the fact that it's a Thursday night, it's bitterly cold here, we can hear the joy out on that park uh, for the community use, um, but you're working hard on building bridges across the work that Wayne Carroll and the Foundation are doing, we, we, we spoke with Wayne recently, his enthusiasm I think probably is as close as I've seen yeah. anyone matching yours, yeah, yeah. tell us about that uh, relationship, how it's developing and, and where it might go. Yeah, look, it's it's a really exciting one. It's it, it's um, it's a part of the game, and that I kind of got, got brought into pretty quickly at the Defer at the Ferman at the time, bringing young players out in the first team, um, and it's something that I've always been really interested in. Something I love doing. I think it's something for um, for a club. Everybody wants to see homegrown young players. They love it. Fans love it. The club love it. So where we are with it, <coughs> it's obviously slightly different. Where we are from other clubs we've been at, we've, we've got a, a really good community club with good people, good coaches, a lot of kids, a lot of football players. And it's about trying to bring that together with, with Wraith Rovers and say, look, can we give opportunities to young players, young coaches? Um, and in the end, can we find players for Wraith Rovers Football Club bringing that together? So again, I met quite quickly with Wayne and the guys um, as soon as I got the job. My continuous is usually with, with Wayne and, and with, with Craig uh, Nicholson at the under 18, so under 16s, under 18s. We've concentrated a lot on those type of age groups at the moment. It's been hard because I've been, I've been busy, um, but it's probably going to crank up a, bit a little bit now. Kind of we spoke as soon as January hits. You'll see me on the pitch a lot more out here with the coaches, with the players, looking to see if if I can find gems that can come into every football club as a full time football player. And I think that's the that's the thing that we've got over a lot of a lot of people in a lot of clubs. There's a genuine opportunity for young players here in this area, in and around, to become a full time football player at Rovers. That's what we're looking to do, uh, and with the help of the guys and myself. 
hopefully we can we can find some. It strikes me that there's a nice balance in that of the community foundations funding model, yeah. but also the bit that um, football can be social, but it's also allowed to be aspirational yeah. and and a pathway for for a kid out in these streets from you know from kick about football all the way through to the first team is yeah. is surely a partnership that's made in heaven yeah look it's not for everybody we understand that we know that um that that path we were talking about but in the main football is it's, it's about getting out and enjoying yourself especially at a young age you've been there i think a lot of pressure can be put on young players nowadays and a lot of in my opinion a lot of un pre uh, pressure that's, that's not needed at a young age it's all about enjoyment involvement uh, start learning to love the game in my opinion uh, and then the older you get, some players like to take it a little bit more serious. Some players actually do do generally love the game and want to have that that feeling of, and that opportunity to be a full time player. We want to try and provide that. Um, so with the help of hopefully, hopefully helping the coaches and um, with a little bit of my knowledge and about what I do about trying to put sessions on and give them little little pointers that I think can maybe help. Um, then spreads out to the players and as I said the longer that goes on we're not trying to stop anybody if they do what they're doing all we're trying to do is add a little bit extra on and that little bit extra is as I said that opportunity that there is a chance for these guys that are out here tonight every Tuesday and Thursday and playing at the weekends there's a chance for them to play for the Rangers Football Club which is a, a brilliant thing to be able to say and some of that's already happened in yeah. terms of some some of the lads that you know we've got bounce games are, are not uncommon in yeah. the, the modern game. Well, of course, was being one just this week that's been spoke about in the, the the gaffer spoke about in his midweek interview with Neil. Mm -hmm. But we've got examples of bounce games taking place. I think it may be the Hearts yeah. one where some of the lads come in and they've already got to play with the first team. They might never go on to sign for Wraith Rovers, yeah. but my goodness, I'd have loved to have had that feather in my cap. Yeah, it was an it was an unbelievable kind of opportunity at the time for and these were these weren't. 18, 19 year olds, these were 15, 16 year olds playing up front with Callum Smith and we, we, we Lewis Vaughan and some of these guys and it, it's a, it was an unbelievable opportunity for them. I, said it, I think they were quite shocked about the kind of speed of the game and, and how things were done but we weren't kind of uh, holding people kind of accountable to, or, or judging them on that. It was just an opportunity to see, look, this is how we work. Um, these are these players. And then there's an opportunity for you. So look, we had Jake Nicholson in at the start of the season, helping us pre-season. Jake's continued to be with us, little bits and pieces. Um, as I said, we've now looked at a few from the the younger age groups, the under-16s have been involved. And it will pick up now a little bit more. Um, as I said, at the start of the season, it was a lot of games have been watched, under-18, 16s. I still, I'm a bit old school, I still call them like that. Uh, a lot of the games have been watched by different people, myself uh, and other people that I know and trust. So I've got a, an idea of, of players that I think I've got an opportunity um, and it's about now the next four or five months me getting out and kind of working with these guys closely, speaking to Wayne and Craig and some of the other younger uh, younger coaches and saying look, is, is there some guys here that we think can come on to be a full-time football player at Wraith Rovers? Is this part of the stepping stone kind of journey really in terms of going towards a reserve team a, a, a full kind of development set up that just now it's about picking up some gems it's about looking at some of the young modern professionals coming in in order to allow that that further step because you know we know how how big a commitment and indeed yeah. to be honest how expensive it is to put in that full youth set up yeah it's, it's a it's a, a big operation i've been involved in clubs where it's it's uh, uh, we're, we're not we're not staff for that at the moment um but what we'll never do is just say we're not going to have anything we'll just do what we're doing we're always looking to improve and this is an area where I think the club can can improve and be better at so would we love to have a, an all singing dancing reserve B team yeah and we might uh, might take a little bit of time to get there it doesn't stop giving people opportunities and said hopefully we can do that and that might just be one or two um, but they've got to prove that they're, they're good enough, they're hungry enough compared to guys at other clubs and, and other areas. So we're not just concentrating on the ones that are here. Yeah, we're giving them the opportunity because they're part of what we're doing, but we're, we're looking for the field as well. So young players, if we can get them from this area, is brilliant, uh, but it's giving these guys that opportunity. Uh, just speaking as a sport, but one of the things that Wayne said that gave me a particular kind of sense of pride when he spent a, a good bit of time about talking about the importance of our badge and our identity, and something that he he was really keen uh, and really almost nervous at the beginning to say, make sure I say this because it's, it's it's my main message, was about how invested the professional club are in the community foundation and how 
much value is placed upon his work and he says that himself and his coaches feel you know, hand in hand with the club in terms of we can rely on resources, we can rely on uh, people and the fact that, as we say, it's a Thursday night and you could be elsewhere but here you are and, and you're a very obvious link to, to, to the first team. Yeah, look, we're, um, we're here, we're, I know we're maybe not, but we're all part of the one club. It's as simple as that. There's different areas of it. I see these guys every day because we're usually here when they're coming on the pitch. So hopefully we're, we're good guys, we're nice guys. I want to have sit and have conversations and see how they're going on with their work and seeing how their jobs are doing, how the players getting on. Is anybody standing out? Is there anybody that's having a good spell? Anybody having a tough spell? Is there somebody we can help with on and off the pitch? That's what we're here to do. They're part of the bigger club. Um, so I would. it's not me. It's not the club. <clears throat> it's not who we, who we want to be. We want to be here to help. Um, and hopefully we can do that. Um, so they've got a really good relationship with Wayne. Speak a lot. Um, and we're constant in what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, and that's just properly trying to build opportunities for people. Um, and hopefully we can do that. Coming into the role... We- was that part of your discussions that, that you had in terms of if I'm going to come in here, I want to be able to help shape and sign up to a set of values as well as just job specification? Yeah, 100%. I think it's 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 really, really important. I think if you just come in and, and do as we've been doing and just see what happens, it, long term it doesn't work. What excites me is trying to do new things, trying to give opportunities. Look, they don't always come off and they don't always, they don't always work, but I think you've got to give it a try. Um, and if we do that, um, I'm pretty confident in the people that are here um, and the people you give opportunities to, especially young people. I think you give young people opportunities, they very rarely let you down uh, and they'll give it everything they got. And as long as we can all do that, hopefully uh, we make Wraith Rovers a better club. Let's look at your, your work more directly connected to the first team. Ian Murray is he's always expansive in reference and uh, his, his value in terms of the role that you've got. Has the complexity of that role surprised you? Uh, yeah, um, a little bit, a little bit, but um, I've loved it. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It just, it's just, there's just a, a lot to do. Sometimes I think I don't know what I'm coming into a little bit, yeah. but a lot of that's to do with it's just a lot of time on phone calls, watching players, checking backgrounds, just making sure, helping the staff that we've got that some that are brought in, some that are here, that they're able to do their job uh, to the best of their ability. And if I can help with that. Um, and that's what we're here to do. We said we we're not here to take shortcuts, and um, we want to try and we want to try and help. And he said hopefully we've got a a good way of working. Um, it took us a little bit of time, but my job is is to try and let for a football point of view, try and let Ian and Colin concentrate on that football side as much as they can. Try and take away a lot of things that spend a lot that take up a lot of time. I can do that. That's what I'm here for. Um, and at the end of the day, we bounce things off each other, and I'm, I'm a very much work as a team. A never-ending set of tasks, an ongoing time frame, uh, and it will change depending on what league we're in. Doesn't it sound easy? Are you, are you working in uh, a couple of different pathways in terms yeah. of all aspects of your job? Loans, recruitment, retention, yeah. everything. Yeah, you, you, you've kind of got to, I think, as I said, we're planning short term. Uh, but a lot of that work was done before. Um, January is a difficult time in terms of the window because it's sometimes it can be a wee bit reactive from clubs because there's people going to clubs going to keep players and things can change quite quickly um, so but we're ready to go when, when we think the business is right uh, but we've got to plan ahead as well and say that that planning for me is is in different leagues because we've got an opportunity uh, and we're positive about what we can do this season we've got a good team we've got good players we've got a good staff um, and we want to go and try and dream and try and get to the Premier League that's where we are and we're going to aim for that that's what we're trying to do um, so th- there's there's many kind of aspects in my job that, that, that we're planning but hopefully wherever we end up we'll, uh, we'll have, it, have it planned for T- Tell us a wee bit about um, the dark arts of securing a loan deal mm. because um, supporters will, will kind of speak about this and we have a little window in here and a little bit of information for different clubs but it strikes me that they, they are either really, really straightforward yeah. or like a Rubik's Cube in the dark. Yeah. Um, you have uh, a long way w- with a wider team here. Uh, I was speaking with uh, Andy Barman recently and I was just looking at the, the quality of 
uh, loans that we have secured, and you know I don't know if there's more to come in, but but looking at um, Kyle last week, looking at Sean Byrne uh, continuing at the end of the, the season, what helps you get those deals over the line? There's a there's a lot, there's a lot of different things. Uh, so it, it 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 takes time. Usually with good players, there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of clubs wanting them. It's as simple as that. So um, it just takes relationships, takes time. It's showing players and clubs that you're keen. Uh, there's obviously a, a a kind of monetary value to it as well, and people seem to get carried away with what they're spending sometimes, which is not true. Um, so. I, there's a lot of things you, you the player needs to f feel wanted um, hopefully and the way we've played this year is very attractive for players and that's been a big thing for players that I've spoke to uh, that they want to come to Rafe Rovers and they've not always um, they've not always came because there's been different reasons for things but people see as an attractive club that they want to come and play and they want to try and be successful they're seeing that we're trying to push so you've obviously got to deal with the, their parent club with the, the contract that they're on um, the player himself so there's a there's a lot of things but in terms of Sean and Kyle those guys were determined to come to us um, they had a lot of offers and a lot of options um, from different clubs but they made it pretty clear very early that they wanted to come to Wraith Rovers which makes it easier for me um, but there's still a, bit, a little bit of work to actually get it over the line you got a little bit of surprise that that's a point you would want to reach, <coughs> but we've reached that yeah. so quickly. Is that yeah. a wee bit of surprise to you? Yeah, um, yeah, probably. That's what we're trying to do, though. We're, we're, we're trying to make this an attractive club to company for players, for fans, um, for staff. Um, this is what we this is what we're here to do to try and make the club I said attractive, to try and make it a good club, to try and make people want to come here, people want to stay here, um, and I think we I could generally say with most of the signings that that we've made. They wanted to come. They wanted to do it, which, which is a good thing from us. Let me pick up on something that you said there, where um, it's something that we've spoke about before, and you've said in previous communication that the budget is built on a model of better value for the club. <coughs> you know, probably without showing your hand too much in public, are you happy with how we've expanded the talent base within the financial constructs that we've we've got? We've not sold or sold, but equally we're we're being ambitious. Yeah, yeah. Look, we've got we work. To a budget, there's a budget there, and between myself and Andy and, 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 and Ian, we look at that. That's that's our job. We can't just go and get whoever we want. Uh, we would love to, <laughs> but you, you can't do that. And say uh, we've we've went for players and spoke to players and other clubs in this division of 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 took them, and we know the kind of figures that they were looking for. So um, I think we've got to be when we're signing players, we've got to feel we're getting good value. Uh, we're getting good value. They're going to add to the group that we've got. I think we've got a very good group of players in there. Um, so they've got to bring something to that as well. And if we don't, then we won't do it. Um, if, they're, if they're too expensive, too costly, don't feel their value, uh, we won't do the deal. Um, it's as simple as that. I think they've got to bring um, a lot of things to the table, hopefully, with the ones that we've signed so far. I think they do. And we're really happy with the signings we've made. Um, and I think the ones that we have made is made the players that were here stronger as well. And so there was a good group of players here as well. So we, we think we've done well so far, and it's just trying to continue that as much as we can. Player retention was always going to be kind of key for us because I guess what you're having to do is you're having to get players bought into the notion of sign another year or two here. Um, it's going to be on the basis that we are going to continue to be forward looking, progressive, and that, that ideally we're going to move through the divisions. Talk to me about. Um, you know, three obvious bits of business stand out. Sam, Lewis, and we kind of forget the gaffer himself. Yeah. Sam was straightforward. Sam was 30 seconds. <laughs> um, so uh, he was very straightforward. Loves it. Wants to stay here. Um, and got it done. Pretty straightforward. Lewis was pretty similar, to be honest. Um, this is his club. Wants to be here. He's been great. Um, he's feeling great. And he's playing really, really well. And deserves it. And said, we were all delighted to get, to get Ian signed up as well wanted to do it we said he was a, a brilliant first half of the season we want to continue on the second half and he's been a, a massive part of that so um, delighted with the, with the business we've done um, and as I said hopefully there'll be a little bit more to go You got the acting lessons booked for next season's marquee signing? Uh, no I'll not be involved in any of that stuff um, but now look we, we want to make we want to make signings um, but we just need to make sure that the ones that we bring in are, are, are right, are right to this group, right for the club, 
um, and improve the squad that we've got. And that's hard because we've got a good squad. So, um, but we'll continue to do our work and hopefully bring in um, some good players. With these supporters who are going to kind of be forward fast and looking to see what the cap, when the captions say, are we bringing anyone else in? Still working on that front for this yeah. window? Yeah, of course. Yeah, look, we'll, we'll continue to work with that. It's an ongoing process. Um, I say that where we are, there's a, the, the players that we look at, players we speak to, they're, they're sought after players. There's a lot of clubs wanting them. Um, so as I said earlier, they've got to want to come here. Um, it's a continuous process, but if we don't get the ones that we want, we won't just go out and sign players for the sake of it. It's not really, it's not my style, it's not the club, it's not what we want to do. We want to sign players that make that change in them stronger, make that team stronger, make it more competitive to stay in that team and to get in the team. I think that's where you, you kind of build a winning culture. Um, and I think we've done that. We've got a lot of competition in places um, to play in that, in that squad and you, you need to be good to stay in it. So, uh, yeah, look, we're always looking. I'm always working. We've planned for January. But as I said earlier, like January can be, it can change in an hour very quickly. So we have to be ready. Um, and as I said, if we think it's right for us as a club, then we'll do it. If we don't, then, then we'll, we'll go what we've got. You rehearsed that answer knowing that I was going to ask that question, didn't you? Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I know everybody wants signings all the time, and they, but you've, you've, as I said, there's, there's, there's many aspects to it. People love a new signing, fans love a new signing in the club, and it's great. And it gives everybody, but I, said, I think for us, it's got to be the right ones. And if we can do that, um, which hopefully we've done okay so far, then we'll be a better club for it. But you are telling me to leave some space in my work diary in the next couple of weeks? Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. We're doing a wee bit of fun with that as well. Um, your direct support to um, Mickey and to Ian, yep. um, you're telling us that it's on the, the coaching ground as well. You'll also be part of the network of um, pre-match, post-match uh, discussion. We've had a, an upward trajectory that I'll comment as a supporter mm -hmm. has, has kind of blown us away and the nature of it as well. Yeah. Uh, we say roller coaster, but that that doesn't do it justice. A um, little bit of a tougher time just now. How how do you remain resolute and make sure that we don't lose sight of how far we've came and how short a time? You've got to be, you've got to be positive where you are. I said um, football can get quite emotional at times, and people react to things pretty quickly. Um, I think where we are, you've, you've got to realise where we are in the league, the work that we've done, the work that's continuing going on, and at the same time, we're joint top of the league, which people seem to forget sometimes. Um, if we lost the first two or three games of the season and we were here now, you'd be absolutely delighted. Um, so, look, you're going to lose games of football, you're going to win games of football. Um, it's important that, that we know that the work that we're doing is, is good. Um, I think... If you look at all aspects of the club, it, it, it's exciting. Uh, I think fans are excited. I think the board, the club, the staff, the players out with Scottish football are looking at Wraith Rovers and are excited about it. So why not like be excited, like dream that we're going to go and do something really positive this year. And if it doesn't happen, then we'll give it our best shot. If it does happen, brilliant, great. So we'll always be positive. I will always be positive in what we're trying to do because I feel what, what we're doing is on the right road, uh, we're working hard, uh, we're continuing to do the right things, we're not letting a couple of disappointing results is what they are, we're not letting, letting that affect what we do. You see some of the training sessions that, that the boys are putting on um, and they're right at it, willing to work hard to try, and, to try and get better results. Results can be funny because they can change over a kick of a ball very, very quickly and that's, that's where we are. Uh, as long as we continue to do the work and continue to um, keep on the right path and I'm, I'm convinced that, that we'll have a good season. A life in sports and, and your employment, your role here, it always strikes me as it's, it's kind of incomparable to any other kind of walk of life because you know, in our own uh, full-time employment we'll never get these emotional highs yeah. but equally I'm quite glad that I've not got 3,000 people at my desk yeah. on a Monday telling me you know what you should have done. Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's quite a joy to be part of, isn't it? It is, look, it's great. And, and as I said, the, the emotional side, you can get really up and really down. Um, I quite like that bit of it, to be honest. Um, and it's it's just important that when you come back to work, you're quite structured in what we're doing. And I, I think that's part of my job. And 
behind the scenes a little bit that we just keep doing the work that we're doing um, and it can be difficult there's not many jobs where everyone's an expert and everyone tells you what, what you should have done and who you shouldn't sign and the way you should have played but you know Ian and manager's quite calm um, he's quite calm but um, we're in, we know we're doing a lot of things right and when we do that I think you win more games than you don't so we'll continue to work hard um, and say we're all loving the job we're going to enjoy the job can't forget that. Hopefully fans are enjoying coming to watch. Hopefully the people that work here are enjoying the working environment. I think that's important. And I said the longer we do that and we enjoy ourselves and we work hard and I think there's good times ahead. Talk to me about the high points and, and a wee bit about this club identity. Um, the, the notion that we... I said this in a couple of interviews where actually we seem more willing than ever to actually just squeeze the joy out of every moment. Yep. Uh, and if it means that we look bold and brash at times, that's fine because we don't know what next week's going to bring. Um, is that something that you dreamed about at the beginning or was that something that you said, you know what, let's do this a bit differently? Yeah, spoke about it. Spoke about it at the beginning and um, some more of the board members and the, um, spoke about it. This is how we're going to be. We're going to be a little bit different. Um, we're going to enjoy the good times. We're going to enjoy moments when... I think you've got to, like, why wouldn't you? This is why we're in the job. So, um, yeah, you're going to have some hard times and tough times, but when you win and when you make a good signing, when you train well, when we get record fan attendances, when when, when we make money in, um, from hospitality, when that's for all that, that's enjoyment. You've got to enjoy it. That's people doing their jobs and doing it well. Um, I would always, always celebrate. I would always enjoy myself. Look, from our side, and the manager will tell you that as well, like very quickly we get back to kind of the, the following week. But when you win and things are going well, and that, I said winnings can be that three points on a Saturday, but it's also other areas of the club that, that we're winning and doing well, enjoy it. I said that's why we do the job, so uh, it's really important. <coughs> Absolutely. It, very quickly for me, you presented as, as, as a guy that's kind of grown up loving this club. You, you seem to um, adopt this identity incredibly quickly did did you expect to be as invested so quickly because it strikes me maybe I'm wrong here John but it strikes me that um, well Wayne spoke about the badge in the chest yeah. um, as that came as a bit of a surprise because there's no way that this appears to be another job for you no it's not I said I made the decision when I came that um, I had the I thought this would be a long time job. Like I'd, I'd moved around a little bit for for three four years, and I thought coming here right, this will be a job where it uh, uh, allows me to get my kind of teeth into it a little bit and, and try and help build a build a club. So um, I'd obviously had the, my brother had obviously told me all about it and made it clear and made it very clear that he'll always be a bigger legend than me, no matter what happens here, um, <clears throat> which he will be. Um, so no, look, it's 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 a great club. Really enjoying it. Really enjoy the people here um, at the moment, and really enjoying the, the positivity and, and, and the enjoyment that's hopefully continues. That's why we do it. We want people of all kind of all sides of the club to come here, love what they're doing, love watching, love playing, love working here. Um, and as long as we do that, hopefully it means we're building a better club. Do you already see that um, at this moment in time, the club's in a better place um, than it was when you walked in, uh, and not just the infrastructure uh, across the, the spread of what we want to be? 100%. In my, in my view, yeah, 100%. I just think what we've done it, 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 um, so far, and it's been very much a, a team effort. Look, yeah, I'm, I'm basically the football side, um, but when you look at all the different areas of the club that I get involved in, like I see this bit tonight, uh, um, hopefully people feed off what we're doing from the football department uh, and I think in all aspects of the club it's, it's a club on the up and that's where we want to be will there be some tough times yeah of course but it's important we keep working hard keep doing what we're doing and if we keep doing that I think we've got a good chance to continue to build this club new, new ideas new energy new people but also uh, it strikes me that there's a kind of coming together and, and a really strong working relationship with people that have been here a yeah. long time and people yeah. that have, have put in a lot of hard miles as well oh, of course 100% like, the club, clubs, it's people like like yourself and guys that have been here a long time that are enjoying it at the moment. But there's been hours and weeks and months and years of of guys at this club. Hopefully, our job is to build relationships with these guys. These guys um, can help us out a lot as well. So, I think when you you, you join a club, hopefully, um, 
quite a nice friendly guy, I hope. <laughs> it's our job to, to, to build relationships. As I said earlier, like I see the, the community staff out there at four or five o'clock. I'm not just going to walk by and, and not say a word. You ask them how they're getting on, you find out how their job is, and hopefully we can do that. Um, if you if you walk by somebody, Linda in the laundry, and she needs a hand, you give her a hand. That's, hopefully that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to build. Um, that We're one big team, and as I said, if we can do that, I think people enjoy their job, I think people work harder, um, and hopefully we can see a little bit of success at the end. Anything you feel we've not covered, any bit of your role that we've maybe not done our due diligence on? There's probably something, but I'll forget. No, look, it, it's a, in terms of my role, it's, it, it's, it is widespread, um, but I'm enjoying it, I'm really enjoying it. It covers different aspects of the club, um, and as I said, if we can continue to do that, I'm sure there'll be something different to do tomorrow again, um, but if we continue to do that, hopefully we can keep building this club. And we get back on camera a matter of weeks down yep. down the road. We, we said we'd do this regularly ac across all aspects of the club. Um, and I think the, the proof is in eating and all of that kind of patter because actually here we are um, with another kind of tranche of interviews of people saying, let's just communicate with the supporters. Yep. That's that's why yep. the, the, the Club TV channel exists. That's why the social media people are working so hard. Um, something that you're enjoying is that face-to-face -face direct contact with supporters. Yeah, 100%. Look, you see them all the time. Um, it can be through various things. And they said we're, we're, we're very much we're, we're sending players out to to schools, to, to boys clubs, to shops, to, to do whatever. And we see people at the stadium, little groups that are doing different walks and talks and loads of different things. When we see them, we go over and we speak. We invite them in when we can um, to show the changing rooms that we've done up. Just to, to, And you see people's faces when, when they see it and they're just blown away by it. So um, I think that's part of, part of why we're here, um, to hopefully show off a little bit of what, what we've done so far. Uh, and there's a lot of hard work, not myself, but other guys at the club that have went and done that um, and show these people that have been coming here for a long time um, that we're trying to make the club better. And that upsurge in numbers uh, behind the goals in particular on the Saturday tells you that yeah. we've been hungry for this for a long time. Yeah. And no disrespect to people that came before who have tried their, their, their done this to, to get us there. Um, Kirkcaldy and the local area, we've got an appetite for what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, it, it's it's a big club, um, and it's about for me continuing to do those things, not just stop them because I think we've done all right. Like five months in, um, we've got to keep going. We've got to keep trying to get more fans in. We've got to try and connect with more fans, with, with younger fans, to the community side. We've got to try and build commercially, um, the markets, like everything, everything. We've got to continue to do it. We've had a good start and it's done well so far. Uh, but it's up to us to continue to work hard to keep building this club. Uh, in all different aspects, and hopefully we can do that. It will never stop, really, will it? Because no. our expectations grow constantly. You know, we, you mentioned at the, at the start there that take us back to uh, day one of the pre-season training, and we say this is where you'll be sitting um, at the start of January, and would be would you know would grab it in a moment. Yeah. Whereas right now we want more. You do. That's just that's the nature of the beast. That you just you want more. You get you get hungry for that success. You get excited, but we want that. So we want people to get excited and, and to enjoy where we are. And are we disappointed we lose a game of football? Yeah, of course. But we want you to celebrate when we win. Um, and that's that's what we're here to do, to to enjoy that roller coaster, if you want to call it that. Uh, and as I said, as long as we continue to do our work um, around the club, then then that's that's where we're in a good place. It's up to us to keep to keep working hard, keep building and and try and shoot for the top. And that's where we are. We want to try and get to the top of that league. Um, and we want to try and win it. That's going to be our next headline, isn't it? Wraith Rovers in football is fun shocker. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's why we're in it. They said you've got to enjoy the good times. They said uh, I've been in it a long time and there, there are tough times and it's hard at times. So um, when you win a game of football or things goes well for you and, and your, area of, and the, your area of your job, enjoy it because um, it's a good thing John, thanks for telling us about, about your role but also about this kind of journey that, that you've been on and, and, and kind of casting forward what might be in the horizon so you know you're giving up your time here for the community foundation see that we're kicking about say lads you want to do that chat i, I think that openness uh, it's our role to get that out to supporters so um so again just thanks for spending the time with us Cheers, david thank you